Hey guys, Greg and Ryan back for another breakdown of Legion, season three, episode four, chapter 23. Again, spoiler warning, if you haven't seen the episode yet, get out of here, go watch it, then come on back. Greg, a phenomenal sweatshirt. Oh, not too bad yourself. Oh. Now the episode starts off with Patonomy getting a little bit of a grooming done on his mustache. Chip, chip, snip, snip, snip. Yeah. I like the noise in the background, the sound effects of the little clicking to start off the episode right from the get go. Yeah. Um, remember, we've been told in the past, don't trust the mustache. Now that was obviously from David's flyers, <laughs> but just just be cautious of, of what side you're on, I guess. Narrative compromised. Temporal glitch. 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 What is glitch. happening? And we quickly learn that something's wrong with time. It only takes a few seconds into this episode before everything goes a little haywire. There's a little bit of glitching going on and kind of like time jumps. And it seems as if the time travel of the last episode has had some type of horrible result in the current timeline. Now this show always kind of stuns us visually when we're watching it, but how they showed time collapsing in itself was pretty awesome. I was worried for a second they were gonna do like a Groundhog's Day or mm. a Russian doll vibe where they're just gonna keep going back to those same moments over and over again. They didn't do that, which right. I'm thrilled with. This was great. Yeah, the, the use of looping and also like the glitching uh -huh. and not only that, like the stop motion, um, all of it worked really well in addition to like the sound effects that they're using throughout this entire show. Oh. Speaking of those visual effects, the rotting apple that we see early on and you see Sid trying to touch it for a second, all I could yeah. think of immediately as a Star Trek fan is Timescapes, a TNG episode where you see Captain Picard, same kind of thing, temporal uh, disturbance anomaly, and there's a rotting apple, rotting fruit actually in this case, and he puts his hand over it. Not a good idea. Ah! <laughs> And speaking of Russian doll, you'll notice right next to Sid, there's some little, uh, yeah, Russian nesting dolls right there. Yeah. So uh, for those out there who are in the camp of David, it's all in his mind. This is all made up in David's head right now. Well, there you go. Then we get a shot of some demon eyes. We've been warned about these demons before. And it had a very like Cheshire cat vibes right here, which right we alluded, alluded to from the past episodes. Not like ferocious looking animals, we can't really we know what they look like yet, but the, it is really creepy. In addition to the visual elements, we also get to hear like the cackling of these demons throughout the episode as we hear like, you know, the clock ticking down as well. Ugh. Whenever they're around, it's kind of like they're looking from the outside in and you, you don't know what direction they're gonna come from. Very effective. And then we have a cool title sequence once again. It's like every single week yeah. now. Uh, this one looks like it could be, I'm gonna say like an illustration from Lauren's eye because she does illustrate. So I'm yeah. gonna say that maybe that's her drawing and that's awesome. Yes, she's an extremely good illustrator. So it's, it makes sense that they were to use her skills in order to make a title sequence. I love how every single week it, <laughs> it, it conveniently fits in. It ties into the theme of what they're going for or what the shot, what the shot calls for. Um, it's very creative, probably the most cr uh, a creative title sequence in any show on TV right now. And specifically for this title sequence, at least for the uh, shot itself, we get the tree and then you got the cat on there. Cat's probably representing the demons. And then that tree, I just keep thinking back to season one where you had that guy hiding in the tree in the first episode, yeah. of the, uh, right? Where he's like just in the background, totally. all green and camouflaged out. I immediately thought of like Alice in Wonderland type vibes, right? Oh yeah. Like, you know, obviously we're dealing with time travel. Uh, the whole thing just has a lot of callbacks to a lot of different time travel movies and films. It's kind of like, it's like a TV little shows. bit of like a, The Matrix in Alice in Wonderland drag or something. Yes, It's definitely. pretty cool. And then next up, Lenny is talking to our partner about baby names, uh, yeah. Violet and Violence. Violence, <laughs> Violet and Violence, yeah. I, and then I did some research. They don't name, you don't name things just randomly in this show. So Violet, mm -hmm. obviously, uh, you know, it's been around for a long time since the Middle Ages, but it didn't really gain popularity until the mid 1900s when people started naming children after like flowers and stuff. Mm -hmm. Now in English, Violet is actually derived from Viola, which was a character in William Shakespeare's Twelfth Night. And I got my notes here. Um, Twelfth Night, if you're not familiar, was a comedy by Shakespeare. And the play centers on the twins Viola and Sebastian, who are separated in a shipwreck. Now Viola, disguised as a boy, falls in love with Duke Orsino, who in turn is in love with Countess Olivia. Upon meeting Viola, Countess Olivia falls in love with her thinking she's a man. A lot of gender roles being switched and swapped in this, and it, it kind of feels perfect for Legion. I was thinking of putting in my two weeks notice, you know? Hitting the streets? What do you think? 
More significantly here, though, is that Lenny wants to possibly ditch David now. She's she's heading out. She's a little nervous she's losing, about what's going on. Yeah, she's losing faith in David and doesn't really believe, uh, you know, they should be following him. And she thinks about, like, up and leaving him uh -huh. with uh -huh. her girl and their coming child. Sure, sure. You can try that. Don't know the rules about her leaving and what happens and how, you know, David we can We don't even easily... know if any of this exists. <laughs> exactly. And right after violent versus violence, we had David and Switch pop right in there over and over over again on the Yeah, grass. it's really cool. We see the loop happening over and over and over again. And then we see, if you look closely, the background actors kind of freeze after a, a, a few loops. Mm -hmm. People, So there is people like getting frozen in time <laughs> after a bunch of, uh, you know, loops keep on going on and on. You can only assume that like- The time, time demons. Time demons are, are doing some serious stuff and basically eating up time around us. Now, when it comes to the demons, I can't be the only one who got some Weeping Angels vibes. Mm -hmm. I, those are my favorite Doctor Who monsters out of anything else on the entire planet. And uh, I just couldn't help thinking of that. <laughs> then we get a shot of David inside. And he's kind of telling his whole commune to chill out. They're underneath a big tree uh, inside. Uh, it reminded me of kind of a, like a linden tree or a lime tree. And, and he's basically, uh, you know, he's their savior. He's Even in his Jim Jones speech a little bit there. Exactly. And then he, he can get basically make them, uh, you know, high. Give them a euphoric state just to kind of appease them and their worries. But Lenny's still, not having it. Lenny's not having it. You know, she, she wants answers. She wants the, the David to, that all-powerful David to come out and, and basically wreck havoc. Now Lenny's got some guts here because uh, all I can think is that David's a ticking time bomb right now. You gotta walk on eggshells with him. He's like the kid from Twilight Zone. It's a good life. Gopher, you be dead. My wife, that's real fine that you've done that. That's, that's real fine, Anthony. Yeah, let's talk about his mindset. He's 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 definitely on edge, right? Yep. Any any wrong thing you say to him could he's set him over the edge, and, and and he can literally see red. Um, it's not a very healthy place for him to be in. Let's say, <laughs> for the world, for anyone, for himself. Like he's very he's not a very balanced individual. If anyone disagrees with him, then he gets angry, and he even threatens people. You know, you don't want to see me get angry. Careful. Right, because that's my specialty. Just use a different tone, okay? Be nice, I need you to be nice, or I can't be nice. Another thing to pay attention to is his relationship with Switch. I'm beginning to wonder why she's even helping him. I mean, she's seen, you know, some pretty dark sides of David, and he even goes to say, like, he would force her to do the time travel. Huh. They'll swarm out like wasps, and pretty soon every- Do I have to force you to- just her watching her move her teeth around. She's just like, yeah. I'm, I, I'm having second thoughts here, buddy. I don't I'm know about this. I'm gonna lose all my teeth for you? Like, why? Mm -mm. I said I am the Alpha and the Omega. I eat monsters for breakfast. So Alpha, the Omega, Jesus proclaimed this in the Bible. Obviously, he's on his Jesus tour right now. Yeah, not only can he go. create these universes or create these worlds, he can create things, mm -hmm. but he can also end them just as easily. So, uh, you know, him being an Omega level mutant, uh, he's one of the most powerful things out there in this universe, and we just gotta watch out. I can't say this enough of how much I really enjoy the look of the demons. Yes, I was worried, too. I was nervous from the yeah, beginning. I was like, ah, just keep them in the background, let's not see them. At the same time, I actually like the physics of how they work in, uh, totally. in this real world, wherever we're at. Definitely works when, you know, time is coll time's collapsing in on Look. itself. Click. And then Click. you see them attacking somebody. And then they transport David to a prison cell, but not any prison, prison cell. What it seems to be okay, is that no. he went back in time to when his mother was at a concentration camp mm -hmm. and, and she was being held against her own will. And then he's having a conversation with her. But then we, we quickly find out that all it's that all conversation was all a ruse. Lies. Now, Greg, we have to talk about the meta moment in this episode. <laughs> time is collapsing in on our characters in Legion. But not only that, time is collapsing in on Everywhere. FX programming. So <laughs> when you're watching this, I, I was like shocked this, this, this even happened. But basically, we then see a scene from the pilot episode of The Shield. Yes, with Vic Mackey. <laughs> with Vic Mackey in an interrogation scene. So I, I just loved how they did this. That literally, you don't like. You think you're like, what am I watching? Did did my legion? Did, did something turn off? What's don't going turn, on? Don't change the but channel. But it's literally like 
the show that we're watching is collapsing in on itself as well, like television programming as a whole. And then we get an, an awesome just scene from one of the best TV shows and one of FX's biggest hits, their first hits. There um, wouldn't probably be a Legion if there wasn't this. Totally. Yeah, so there you go, that's kind of cool. Your turn to play bad cop? No. Good cop and bad cop left for the day. That whole S.H.I.E.L.D. sequence reminded me of Atlanta and how they, they basically shot their own commercials mm -hmm. in Atlanta. So it was like an hour of programming, but then they would cut in these commercials that were all produced and filmed and directed by the, the Atlanta team. So it was all like one encompassing, one big you know, sh programming block that you're watching that you're just kind of in their world. It was really cool. The Dodge Charger. The official car of making a statement without saying anything at all. Now back at Division 3, Farouk is there to at least help everyone out here by Seems. explaining what's <laughs> going on. He's helping all of us out, the yeah. audience as well, explaining what these, now we can call them, time eaters. And yeah. he now tells us that, okay, so think of it, they're like termites, and time is the wood. Right, in the house. And uh -huh. they're, they're basically, they want to jump into our world and consume time Cause havoc. as termites would. So that's why we see all this this glitchiness and these time jumps, they're basically like ending the world. They're eating time. So much like David talking to his mom at the camp in prison, um, you know, Sid then runs in with the demons and they basically manifest this conversation with her younger self, Yes. a 16 year old Sid. And after that conversation, we understand that Sid's story is a very tragic one. Yeah. That um, she went through some very traumatic things when she was a teenager. Um, and then years later being taken advantage of by David. You know, love isn't always what we think it might be. Um, and although she does say that she did fall in love with, with someone, with David. She brings up like, that It's a lot more complex yeah. than that. Yeah. And, and ultimately, you know, the me first tattoos that she, she, needs to, she needs to be a strong woman and kind of put her needs in front of anyone else's. It's not giving up. It's what you wrote. Now, somehow, Carrie breaks free from his David spell just because he's smelling some like uh, time eater's poop or yeah. something. Uh, cool, sure, whatever. He, he, he wakes up and he's now trying to get the hell out of there. Yeah. I don't know exactly how he just it, woke it, up. It looked to me that. like almost like that erased, that erased what had happened to him, what David had done to him. So like David had, had, had put him under his spell, but the time eaters, the demons, Somehow basically had erased that whole thing, so it never happened. So basically, he's back to normal. None of that <laughs> happened, and now he can kind of try to get Switch and get her the hell out of there. Speaking of Switch, what does she have in her hand when he finds her? A giant toothbrush. I love that. I, I, that I is just, so cool. I love that this. They probably <laughs> have like a ton of just giant props laying around <laughs> in this show. And I was thinking, like initially, that that toothbrush has to be used on that giant pig, right? Like brushing, keeping oh, his teeth clean. Right. That has oh. to be that has to be useful. Why, would why, you else, have that? why else would you have a giant toothbrush? <laughs> now, pro tip: if time is collapsing around you, do not touch the frozen people because you too will freeze. That's also in the Star Trek episode Timescapes as well. Did it was this man always standing right here? <laughs> the Shadow King's powers do work against these demons, but he also needs to get them out of time. That kind of in between the space, the space between time. In more time, but not a black hole, because he says but it not a black hole. Black it's like this yeah. crazy Instagram photo yeah. landscape spot where it's kind of like stop motion. So if you think of time as like regular motion, if you're in between it, it's stop motion. Some things we noticed in this location is that the sun has like hands of a clock on it. Yep. Um, they're they're <laughs> like in this really strange like campground, and there's like Tent. this crazy yeah. dead animal that is was hunted or yeah, I have no idea. And like the Shadow King is cutting it open, and <laughs> eating it, and. And then they, they're trying to get to a location that is in the distance that's a mailbox. Like the cave entrance is a giant mailbox. Like you're watching an Acme cartoon all of right, a sudden. Right, It was pretty wild, I'd say. So Carrie and Switch are trying to bounce. They're trying to get yeah. the hell out of there at this point. And they go, actually, which is cool, They from the first episode, we have that time portal thing again. So it actually right. exists. So they're going yeah. back through that thing. And they find a little, it looks like a telephone booth. And this is where we get another Matrix call back. And, Love uh, it, trying to call back and get us get us get us sent back extraction. to safety. Extract extract us to safety. Yeah, that was cool. The only thing missing was basically Lenny trying to drive up to them in that little like that yes. Cheshire cat bus trying yes. to crash it. I I also didn't notice when they were getting trying to get to this like extraction point on the wall, 
you can't really make out mm. what the sign that there, but it looked like it said, ain't it over in big block letters. I couldn't make out the first few letters there. Um, I thought it was a fun like nod to like the, the world might be ending here. Like it, it, the time is collapsing on itself and this might be the end. Also check out the watchful eye in the background when they're getting yeah. extracted out of that room. And at the same time too, I love when they call in and just chaos is ensuing back at with Patonomy bot and everything going on over there. So the, the problem was the time codes because of the time collapsing in on itself that the time code needed to be reset. Mm -hmm. I'm starting to see Patonomy as this kind of just comedic relief for the most part it's for the like season. kind of like the C-3PO giving uh -huh. <laughs> stats uh, the whole yeah, time. Yeah, uh, especially when Carrie asked him for like a diagnostic on the time meters and he says three years. <laughs> yeah, like we don't have that much time, dude. Come on. Estimated time of calculation, three years, two months, and nine days. <laughs> three years. Now let's move on to Lenny and her vision with the time meters, which yeah. was pretty damn disturbing. She just got a, uh, what do you want to call this? Like the first 15 minutes of up, basically. <laughs> and on top of that, her partner gone. With this world, we're dealing with the dreamscapes and everything. Mm -hmm. I mean, who knows? But you did see little ashes at the bottom there. So did the right. time and meters the, kill her? Once the loop is over, it yeah. looks like she's gone and that she won't be having a child. And I she's left with nothing. Doubt it. It was, it was a very heartbreaking <laughs> loop that she was yeah. in. You know, to have her child grow up and then grow old and then and then die oh. and all this stuff happened to her. It was that's rough. it was yeah. A lot of emotions all com compressed into a short amount of time. You can tell that at this point. I mean, Lenny has to be thinking like, what else do I have to live for? What's going on? And then after that, we got this fun action sequence that looked like they were, you're just watching it through a book, watching the little fun action fight with uh, Carrie, Clark, and Shadow King. He even pulls a sword out of his mouth. All right. right. Cool. I, I, I think this show does action so well. Like, it's nothing what you expect, right? We've seen the yeah. dance sequences. We've seen astral plane fights. I mean, this... It's so much fun and creative, and it's more its more than just watching, you know, a, a slasher or shoot 'em up type of action sequence. Like, this is a lot of creativity behind these scenes. And let's not forget about the song that's playing in that scene. You can't forget about it. Squares by the Beta Band, which is a sample of the Wallace Collection's Daydream. And it's also in Lupe Fiasco yep. and Jill Scott's Daydream. And I mean, it's its perfect for this show, mm -hmm. and especially when we're, we don't know what's reality, what's what's fake, what's, what's a dream. We don't it's, know. We what literally this world are daydreaming with. while we're watching it. And then next up, David's going after the time eaters. He's had enough. He keeps walking up to him. He was kind of toying with them too long, right? Yeah. He's pissed off now at this point. He goes full Doctor Strange. He sets but, one of them on fire. Yeah, and he basically tells them, like, tell, you know, unless the, the one that's alive there, hey, tell your friends. I will do this to each and every one of you. I am that strong of a mutant. Like, stop, stop messing with us and leave us alone. Go. Or I kill every one of you. And when the dust is finally settled, David goes back to the commune and what happens? Switch and Carrie are gone, of course, and he's not happy. Yeah, he's gonna start on a full-on war, it seems, with Division Three and war. who's remaining, you know. And we don't know what this means for us moving forward. Did the Time Eaters, did they already eat a uh, time that we can't get back? Do they come back? Do they come uh, back they and still eat going more? After are, they gone, are they gone for good? Like, we don't know exactly what that means. And how will David, what's his plan if he can't time travel, you know? Is he just gonna go all out, guns blazing, and start, like, you know, astral planning it? He's gonna go grab Switch somehow, some way. You're gonna get that scene. Come with me. And then, hand, I'm telling you. It's, I don't I, think I, Switch is gonna be too happy to help him this time around. If I was Switch, I'd be a little bit cautious about David. We've seen how kind of his, his mood is switched and uh, you don't really know if you're fighting for the good guys anymore if you are teaming up with him. Run, girl. Yes. Guys, let us know your comments, your theories, your predictions moving forward in the comments below. We love reading what you guys think. We'll see you all back here next week. Bye-bye.